Hey church, we are so excited to have you with us today and want to invite you into this time of worship. Let's give God our best praise. Let's go. Yeah. Here on earth as it is in heaven. Let it be done in this place. Here we bow down in your presence. Lifting high your holy name. Come on. Praising you is what we came here for. Praising you is what we came here for. And we're not leaving till we give it all. Praising you is what we came here for, yeah. Praising you is what we came here for. Praising you is what we came here for. And we're not leaving till we give it all. Praising you is what we came here for, yeah. No, I don't need another reason to pour out my heart. You are God in every season, worthy of worship always, yeah. Praising you is what we came here for, praising you is what we came here for, and we're not living till we give it all. Praising you is what we came here for, yeah. Praising you is what we came here for. Praising you is what we came here for, and we're not leaving till we give it all. Praising you is what we came here for. Oh, oh. oh. All the glory, all the glory. Oh 
Jesus, we thank you for your love. All glory and honor to your name. Yes, Father, you're worthy of all praise because you are good. As we sing out this song together, as we give him our lives, as we put our trust, our whole lives into his, he's going to meet us. Every area of our lives where we feel are broken or shattered, thank you, Jesus, that you just pick those pieces up. You put them back together and you give it back to us, our whole lives, put back together better than we could ever possibly imagine. That's just how good you are. So as we sing out, let's put our full faith in him, yes. our full trust in him, yes. that he's good and he'll finish what he started.
Welcome to church. We are going to continue in this space with the team of worship, and we're going to pray together. It says in God's word that he stands at the door and knocks, and all we have to do is respond. Open up the door of our hearts and let him in. As we sing out that we're available, that we surrender, his promise is that no matter what dark valley we walk through, he is with us. He says, I am your provider. I am your friend. I am your comforter. There's nowhere to the east, to the west, to the north, to the south. No distance you can run that God can't find you. And that is why we pray and we praise and we glorify his name and we sing the name of Jesus because he is worthy. We have some things to celebrate because God is on the move. And these, these are answered prayers. These are miracles that stir our faith for what we can pray for and stand for for our cities. We had 48 people in the last four weeks that in one of these services decided to put Jesus at the center of their heart, to commit their life back to him. Heaven is praising for that. That is incredible. Our team harvested in the last four weeks 253 pounds of produce for families in this city in need. We had people submit 
praise reports about actually two people that met in the chat last week during service and it led to a new job opportunity. So if you're not in the chat, you should get in the chat because God is not bound by a screen. He's not bound by quarantine. He is using whatever avenue that we show up in with faith to do miraculous things. We've had someone who's looking for a job find a job opportunity with a visa that's gonna make a way that seemed impossible. A credit card bill that was looming, financial provision in the last week for it. Church, God is moving. And there are requests that have come in and I know that there are requests in your life, in your heart, that you need to believe, we can believe God, that He is able. Type God is able in the chat. There are some requests on the screen now. People that feel distant, and they are praying for God, just as we're singing this morning, to come and close, be close with them, families and friends that need Jesus. We've had, we wanna pray right now for the schools, for families, for teachers, for kids that are gonna be going back this month to school in this, in this time, for God to use it, for there to be a flourishing and a hunger for life and growth. We wanna pray for people that need healing, people that need healing from epilepsy, from anxiety, from depression, someone who is, has a tumor and needs that tumor to respond to the chemotherapy, that we get to stand in faith together today and faith. So would you pray with me? There are needs that are on the screen that you can pray for. Pick one or two and pray with me as I pray and lift up things in your own life. And let's believe that God is able. Jesus, we thank you that you are high and lifted up. God, you are above circumstance. You are above all of these needs. God, we thank you for supernatural provision. God, I, I lift up right now. God, families that need provision for this year, people with looming bills like we praise for, God, that you would bring supernatural provision. God, we lift up the schools and the families and teachers, God. We thank you for them, that they are amazing, that you would bless them, that you would strengthen them. God, that you would bring health and safety. God, we speak your supernatural healing over people that need it. God, we thank you for doctors coming back surprised by healings, people waking up and experiencing healing in their sleep, feeling stronger than no ever doctor ever told them they God, we thank you for health and life. God, that you are the God who is able. We speak your provision over these needs and stand in faith together. Jesus, we thank you for who you are and we praise this in your authority and your name. We pray, amen. Amen. Well, I know I'm thankful this morning for all God's doing. If you're a thankful type, I'm thankful in the chat. We are so glad you're here joining us. My name's Janelle, and hey, if it's your first time here at C3NYC, we just wanna welcome you. Pastor Josh and Georgie moved here almost seven years ago with a vision for this church. And what started as just five people in a dinner party grew from five to tens to hundreds to thousands. And now we're not just in New York City, we're actually in Paris and all over the world. You'd be surprised, it's easier now than ever to get connected. There's a number that is at the bottom of the screen. I encourage you to text that, to not leave here today without getting connected. There are dinner parties that meet every Wednesday night. They're both online, all over the world. You can join in right from your home and join our community where we talk about Sunday's message, where we pray together and we commune with one another because we're not on this journey alone. We also have dinner parties that meet in person so that you can join and commune with people. We encourage you to get connected this week. Just text that number on the screen. Families, if it's your first time joining us today, we're so glad you're here. We actually have special content just for you. You can go to c3.nyc forward slash kids and there's worship and a message and you can, after the service, you can join together as a family and watch that. Well, before we dive into the message and hear from one of the amazing pastors here at C3NYC, I wanna encourage us as we give together. We're a generous church. All of this is here because there are people that have paved the way for God to use our little as we give to make something like an online church service possible, to make something from five people to thousands of people possible, to get the good news of Jesus out into the cities that need it. And giving is an, is an act of trust. There's a number on the screen and you can text it to get a link to your phone to give today. And I encourage you to do that. I'm gonna encourage us out of Isaiah 12. I'm gonna read this to us. It says this, surely God is my salvation. I trust in you. I will trust and I will not be afraid. 
The Lord, the Lord himself is my strength and my defense. He has become my salvation. He has become the person in my life I look to for rescue. He has become my strength. He has become my protector. He has become the one I place my trust in. That's what that's saying. And I have found that giving is a sign of trust to God. Because what we, what we cling to is what, is what we trust. And giving actually connects us to a kingdom principle that God actually is the giver of all things. And by putting him first with our finances, by giving our first 10%, by tithing, we align ourselves to that and we are reminded, it is like an anchor for our hearts that he is our provider. I didn't really grow up understanding a concept of giving financially to God. And I remember I later in life came to faith, accepted Jesus in my heart and began at reading the scriptures and began to learn it's not just a, an action that people do, it's a kingdom principle. And I still remember the day I decided that I was like, I want my life to be marked by my faith in God. And at that time, I was working a part-time job and setting up reoccurring giving and deciding to give 10% of what I was making didn't feel glamorous. There was no one celebrating me. But it was a decision I made that I was like, from here forward, I want to be known that I trust God in all areas of my life. And that includes my finances. And I found over the years, over the seasons of wealth, over in the seasons of struggles, over the seasons where I don't have financially enough or where I'm experiencing doubt, that that consistent decision has kept my heart aligned with him. And I've seen him work in miraculous ways. Wherever you're watching today, that moment, it might not feel glamorous right now. You might be alone in your apartment or with friends, or maybe you're with family. Deciding to give and to put your trust in God may not feel glamorous, but I can tell you that heaven is celebrating, that it is a kingdom victory, because that is what God loves, is when we open up our full heart to him and invite him in and trust him, step out and give to him, and that is an anchor for our soul in this season. So I encourage you to give as I give, as we give together as a church, to put our trust in God that he is able and that we will see him do abundantly more than we can think or imagine as we step out in faith today. So would you pray with me as we pray over these gifts? Jesus, we thank you that you are our provider, that you are faithful and true. We give because of who you are, what you've done to us, and we link our faith, our actions with a trusting heart to who you are. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, church, we're going to dive into the word together as a church. Let's get our Bibles out. Let's get our notepads out. Let's take some notes as we welcome Pastor Fillmore to share with us today. So good. Hey, thanks so much, Pastor Janelle. How's everyone doing? As she said, my name is Fillmore. Uh, and if you don't know, I'm actually the third Fillmore in my family. Uh, and uh, when I have my hair cut and trimmed, I, I think I'm the most good looking. But maybe uh, next Sunday or whenever uh, I get a haircut, that will be the case. But hey, we're just so glad that you are here. Uh, what a great service. I love the worship with uh, Ron and Paula and just such great leading. Come on, who loves the team and everyone that it just leads us in the presence of God every single week? And hey, today uh, we're going to be talking uh, about uh, faith and we're going to be reading from the Bible. Come on, anyone got a paper Bible with them at, at home? Uh, if you don't invest in one, uh, I love it. Mine is kind of you know, it's, it's, it's pinned up, it's marked up. Uh, what's those jokes like, you know, a Bible that is falling apart is a life that's not, you know, one of those. Uh, but anyway, just uh, get in the word. Actually, I was looking at one of Pastor Josh's uh, Instagram posts uh, even today before uh, I, 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 I shared, uh, got up here to share the word. And I love it because he was talking about meditating on scripture. Uh, and I love that because uh, you and I uh, are, are called to not just to, to gloss over the word. No, we're, we're called to consume and to chew on it and to allow the word and the scriptures and the stories and the truths to fill our imagination. And I've actually found in my own life, uh, man, that uh, the Christian life or following Jesus becomes very, very hard uh, when I don't have a consistent rhythm of, of scripture in my life, uh, when I don't actually spend time praying. So I just want to encourage you uh, at the outset of this, maybe if you haven't picked up your Bible, in a while. Why don't you do it? Open it up. Read it. I believe God's going to speak to you uh, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, hey, if you have your Bibles, we're going to be in uh, Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5. 
uh, reading from the Gospel of Mark. I love Mark because Mark just gets straight to it, you know? Like, uh, there's no genealogies in Mark. He just goes straight to the action, you know? Uh, who, who uh, like, despises previews, like long previews and movies that kind of drag out? Like, Mark isn't like that. Come on, he gets straight to the action. Come on, somebody. Uh, but anyway, Mark chapter 5, a bit of context. Uh, prior to this uh, particular passage, we're going to pick up in uh, verse 21. Uh, Jesus had just calmed the storm. So he, he's, he's showing off his, his power over nature. And then right after that, he, he uh, showed his power over evil spirits. And, uh, and, and right now, picking up in verse 21, uh, Jesus is going to show off a bit more because that's what he does. Come on, I know that Jesus shows off uh, because that's who he is. I love it because he is the great I am. Uh, he's not the great I was, by the way. Come on, he's the great I am. That's good news for somebody right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell someone that was good, you know. If you're with anyone, hey, uh, but it says this in, in Mark chapter 5, verse 21 says, Jesus got into the boat again. Uh, it, Jesus got into the boat again and went back to the other side of the lake where a large crowd gathered around him on the shore. There's uh, a crowd, uh, they're pressing against him. The, the, the language there uh, is, is as if the, it, it's, it's suffocating because everyone is just crowding around him. Reminds me of the L train prior to. To quarantine and, and COVID. Uh, then a leader of the local synagogue whose name was Jairus arrived when he, when he saw Jesus. He fell at his feet, pleading fervently with him. My little daughter is dying, he said. Please come and lay your hands on her and heal her so she can live. Now, we're not going to spend much time here, but I just love this right away because uh, we see this prominent person in the community, this religious leader who was responsible for the worship in the local synagogue. We, we see that when he sees Jesus, I love that there's a response. Like he falls to his knees. This is a noble man. And he recognizes the power and authority of who Jesus is. And that lets me know that when it comes to Jesus, like, there's no real new, new, neutrality with Jesus. You know, either we respond to him with reverence and worship, or we either ignore him. There, there's no, like, lukewarmness when it comes to who Jesus is. And then it says this in verse 24. This is where we're going to pick up. Jesus went with him, and all the people followed him, crowding around him. A woman in the crowd for 12 years with constant bleeding, she had suffered a great deal from many doctors. And over the years, she had spent everything she had to pay them, but she had gotten no better. In fact, she had gotten worse. She had heard about Jesus. I want you to underline that. She had heard about Jesus. Highlight that in your phone. She had heard about Jesus. Someone say she had heard about Jesus in the studio. Come on, say she had heard about Jesus. So she came up behind him through the crowd and touched his robe. For she thought to herself, for she thought to herself, if I can just touch his robe, I will be healed. Immediately the bleeding stopped and she could feel in her body. There was this experience in her being that she had been healed of her terrible condition. Jesus realized at once that healing power had gone out from him. So he turned around in the crowd and he asked, who touched me? And I love the disciples' response because they're reasonable people just like you and me. They, his disciples said to him, I imagine Peter with his sass, Jesus, look at this crowd pressing around you. It's like Coachella, Jesus. How can you ask who touched me? But he kept on looking around to see who had done it. I love that, that Jesus kept on looking around. He didn't want her to just receive something from his backside, but he wanted to, to look at her face to face. That's, that's good news for somebody that, that you may just be coming here tonight, uh, today, and, 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 and trying to maybe uh, uh, kind of uh, come in and out of the chat and not be noticed. But can I tell you that, man, no matter what it is, Jesus doesn't want you to just settle for that. He wants to, to find you and, and look at you face to face. And I love it. It says, uh, then the frightened woman trembling at the realization of what had happened to her came and fell to her knees in front of him and told him what she had done. And we're going to end in this verse, verse 34. Who loves the Bible? And he said to her daughter, I love that. This is the only time in the Gospels we see Jesus use this word, daughter. Your faith has made you well. Go in peace. Your faith has made you well. Go in peace. Your suffering is over. Hey, if you're taking notes, uh, you can just put this at the top. Uh, your faith has made 
you well. Come on, your faith has made you well. That's the title today. Hey, let's pray. Holy Spirit, help us uh, through your word and through your scriptures. Lord, we love you. We praise you. We give you all the glory and honor for what you're going to do uh, today in this moment. Open up our hearts. Open up our minds to receive from you. Lord, we just don't want to... Uh, uh, consume information, but Holy Spirit, we ask in this moment that you open up our heart so that we could see a, a revelation of who Jesus is and who he is to us right now in this present moment in our season, in every family, in every marriage, Lord, in every friendship, Lord, in every relationship, every single person, Lord, I pray for a deep revelation of who you are in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen, amen. Hey, um, just a quick question. Uh, uh, for everyone watching, uh, anyone like traveling? Any traveling people? Uh, anyone like traveling? You like traveling? Cool. Um, I don't necessarily like traveling, but I do like arriving. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't like going uh, through the TSA. You know, why do I have to take my laptop out of my bag and put it in the bin? Why do I got to take my shoes off? You know, like, I wanted to keep that, you know, you know, 50-ounce bottle of toothpaste. Like, I, wh like, why do I have to do all these things? Then you get on the plane and... You you know, you got to pretend that you like these dry crackers that they give you and these cookies, but that's not what this is about. But um, the other day, Caitlin and I were, were traveling. Uh, shout out to Caitlin. That's my fiance. Love you, boo. Uh, we went uh, back to Detroit uh, and we visited some family and then we came here. Uh, we had a layover. A connector flight from Detroit to New York in Chicago. And you know one of those small planes? Because Detroit to Chicago is about 30 minutes, so it's a smaller plane. And, and, and midway through our, our flight, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, some of the worst turbulence that we had ever faced, or that I had ever uh, experienced. I actually didn't ask her if that was the worst she ever experienced. But all I know is both of us, upon like uh, the, the moving and the shaking, we just begin to tremble in fear. Well, I, I think partly b because it was scary. There was actually one woman on the train, uh, sorry, on the, on the plane that she like starts to scream. She was screaming. I'm like, oh, wow, that, you know, made me even a bit more fearful. Uh, but we looked at each other. She, she grabbed me. I'm like, not too tight, babe. We're not married yet. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and and we, we just began to there's this fear that came over us. And I think partly uh, the fear was because in that moment, you feel like what is happening to you is outside of your control. You, you feel helpless. You feel hopeful. You feel hopeless. You feel powerless. You're on this train. And you're kind of out. Uh, outside of your control. Like, there's not much that we can do besides pray. I'm praying in tongues. Like, Lord, you know, get us there safely. But outside of that, there, there's not much that we could do. And I got a, I got a question. I mean, have you been there lately? Have you maybe uh, come to a place in your life, maybe a little past year, past six or seven months, where you kind of feel that, man, what, what's happening to you? Does it feel kind of like it's out of your control? Do you feel helpless? Do, do you feel powerless? What, what do you do when you feel helpless? What do you do when you feel powerless? And, and the reason I say that, because we just read a story, 13 verses in Mark chapter 5, about a woman who I think actually can relate to that sentiment. If you read the story, it says, for, for 12 years, this woman had suffered. Uh, it says, for 12 years that this woman had, had suffered. I'm going to read it uh, in verse 24. It picks up, Jesus went with him and all the people followed, crowding around him. A woman in the crowd had suffered for 12 years with constant bleeding. And this is a polite way of simply saying that she had an a uncontrollable flow. Now, what, what we got to understand here about this 12 years is that this wasn't just a physical pain that she was experiencing and a physical suffering. Because under the, the, the Jewish uh, uh, a law that you see in Leviticus, I believe it's Leviticus chapter 15, it talks about uh, uh, people with her specific condition. They are labeled unclean. And because they are labeled unclean, this is not just a physical problem. I mean, no, this is a social problem as well. This is, a, this is a, a religious problem. She can't worship in public. She can't worship maybe the God that she uh, began to know and love. She, she, she hadn't been hugged or touched or felt. Man, we don't know if her love language was physical touch, but any love language people out there that physical, she wasn't able to be touched for 12 years. She, she didn't experience a hug. She was quarantined. Some of us right now, we're, we're upset because or we're frustrated and we're emotionally distraught because we've been in quarantine for six or seven months. How about 12 years from this woman? I mean, if she had kids, those kids probably would have been taken from her. If she was married, she'd probably have been in divorce. So this is pain. She feels like things are out of contr her control because if you read in the story, it says she went to doctor after doctor and she gave everything, all of her fortune. 
and she didn't get any better. In fact, the Bible says that she got worse. Day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year, pain, struggle, heartache. Feeling like, oh man, this is out of my, I'm doing everything that I can in my power. <laughs> I'm doing everything that I can in my, to, to, to get myself, I don't know what my future will hold. And that's actually part of, 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 of the, the anxiety around maybe not feeling like we're in control in certain situations because we don't actually feel like we can control our future. Can I show you, what do we do when we're in these situations? What, what, what do we do when we feel like life is, out of control. Have you been there, man? I've been there. But I think that we can learn from this woman. Because I love what it says here. Because so we're talking about faith today. It says her faith had made her well. I love what it says as we keep reading on. It says she has suffered a great deal. Uh, it says she has suffered a great deal from many doctors. And over the years, she had spent everything that she had to pay them. But she had gotten no better. In fact, she had gotten worse. In fact, she had gotten worse. But I love this in, in, in verse 27. Jenny had heard about Jesus, so she came up behind him through the crowd. I love that it said that she had heard about Jesus. Come on, that's good news. Hey, I don't know what you're going through right now. I don't know what you're feeling right now. But can I tell you, or can I ask you a question? What are you hearing about Jesus? I want to define faith for us because uh, at the end of the story, we, we saw that it says that her faith made her well, a faith is simply this. Faith is a personal trust in God that results in obedience. I'm just going to find out. When you, when you look at the Hebrew and you study the Greek word for faith, the, faith, the word used, it's a working definition for us. It's a personal trust in God. It's not a mere existence or a mental assent. It's a personal trust in God that results in obedience. And this is important because uh, the, the, the word faith or the noun for faith and the, 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 the verb to believe in the New Testament is, is actually used uh, over 240 times, which actually lets us know um, that, you know, when it comes to a life of faith and you and I uh, living out our faith, that this is not something that is, you know, peripheral to what you and I are called to. Actually, it's fundamental to, to life. It's fundamental to you and I as we follow Jesus. It's, it's integral. So I think you and I today can, can learn from this woman. I love that she doesn't have a name, by the way, because it represents all of you, <laughs> all of us, all of us, because all of us are going to find ourselves in moments. Maybe you don't feel like you're out of control or you don't have, uh, uh, maybe you don't feel helpless or hopeless. That's okay if you don't feel that right now. Uh, if you've never felt that before, I'm, I want to question, are you human? Are you a robot? But whatever, we can talk about that later. But all of us at some point in our time, we're going to feel out of our depth. But what do you do when you get that place? I think first and foremost, what do you do with your faith when you get to that place uh, precisely? I think first and foremost, one of the things we learn from this is, is faith actually comes through what we hear. Faith comes through what we hear. Watch, it says, she had heard about Jesus. She had heard about Jesus. What caused this woman who had spent 12 years suffering in pain and turmoil and hurt, what caused her to, to, to live? Because she could have stayed at home, by the way. Like, like she could have stayed at home. Like she could have basically projected the, tr the, 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 the facts of her situation, the facts of her circumstances, the facts of her disappointment or discouragement. She could have projected that onto what she had heard about Jesus. But, but whatever she heard about Jesus, we don't know what it was, but we do know that it had to be something that was truthful. It was truth. Because faith is actually built on the foundation of truth. And what she heard about Jesus, it caused her to risk public humiliation in order to press through the crowds to receive her healing. And part of what I want to say today is, is that I think if you find yourself maybe thinking or feeling that your faith is ineffective or you feel like, like your faith is, is flailing or, or, 
or, or uh, uh, failing or, or, or maybe not producing. Or, uh, I think so often it, 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 when it comes to my life, I don't know, I can't speak for everyone, but when it comes to me, what I try to do is I try to like, like, like use my will. Like I want to believe better. <laughs> I'm going to try harder. But, but I actually don't think that that's necessarily how or what produced faith in her. I actually don't even think that as she's moving through this crowd, she's like, oh my goodness, I got great faith. I actually think that she's so consumed with her, her heart and her mind and her imagination are so consumed with what she heard about Jesus that that is what led her to focus. It's a singular focus. Now, what I want to uh, kind of present to us today is that if we want our faith to grow, if we want our faith to be effective, you and I have to guard what we adhere about Jesus, about his power, about his goodness, about his desire to, to heal. I love what it says in, in, in Romans chapter 10. It says this, but not everyone who welcomes the good news for, 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 uh, for Isaiah the prophet said, Lord, who has believed our message. I love that in, in verse 17. So faith comes from hearing. That is hearing through the good news about Christ. Can I tell you some good news about Christ? That he says this, that, that Jesus looked at them and said to the disciples, with man, this is impossible. Come on, with God, all things are possible. Can I tell you uh, that some good news about Christ, what it says in Romans 8, uh, verse 31, it says, what then shall we say in response to all these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, he gave up for us all. How will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Matthew 7, 11 says this. And if you, then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give, give, give good gifts to those who ask him? One of the things I want to present to you and I today is that what we need to do is not allow our circumstances not allow what we don't see to determine what we believe about God. No, we need to allow what we believe and what we hear about God to determine how we live out whatever circumstance are we in right now. Because what I'm telling you, even in what we're going through, come on, he still has power. Come on, he still is good. And he has a desire to save you. If you feel like you can resonate with this woman, I love what it says in John 3, 17. It says, for God did not send his son into the world to, to condemn the world, but to, but to save the world through him. Can I tell you some good news today? Here's what I want you to hear about Jesus. Here, here's what I want to, to begin to, to, to spark your faith a bit. Can I tell you, if you feel helpless, if you feel hopeless, if you feel like you've lost control, if you feel like you don't have what it takes, can I tell you some good news that Jesus is passing through your town? Can I tell you some good news? That's actually the perfect position for you to actually realize that where your ability runs out, come on, God's ability picks up. When you rig it out, uh, when you feel out of control, can I tell you that God is actually still in control and he passes through your town and he does not come to condemn you. He does not. Part of the reason that Jesus came was to save and to heal and to restore. And I came here to remind some people today, come on, I am not going to allow my discouragement or my disappointment or what I don't see. No, what I want to do is I want to protect what I hear about Jesus. What are you hearing about Jesus? What, 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 have you, what fills your thoughts? What fills your imagination? What, fills, what, what reports are you hearing? We don't know if it was word of mouth. We don't know what, how, but, I, but what we do know is that what she heard about Jesus caused her to, 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 to come to the crowd and push through so she can receive. So the first thing is, the point is this, faith comes. It grows through what we hear. The second point is this, that faith actually has a resolve to obey. So she came up behind him through the crowd and touched his rope. Now, she is bold, by the way, because, uh, because of her condition, she's literally not even supposed to be in the crowd because the law said if she rubs shoulders or if she touches anyone, that that person now becomes unclean. So now they also, too, contract that, that status, that label that she also 
pass. Now, I'm thinking about her, and I'm thinking about me. I'm thinking about her story, and I'm thinking about your story. Now, uh, what I want to propose and what I'm thinking about is uh, I don't imagine that when it comes to information about God, like she had more information about God than you and I, like right now. Because we live in an information age. We got podcasts. We got sermons. We got blogs. None of these things are, 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 are wrong. Uh, these are actually good. We, I believe we need more amazing content uh, that, that helps us digest and, 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 uh, and, and, and uh, understand who God is. But, but I think the tension is that so much of our understanding about faith as, as, as Americans, as people who live in, in, in this part of the Western world, so much of our understanding about faith simply stops at just acquiring the right information. Acquiring, and, and, and we limit faith to consuming information about God and believing the right things. And can I tell you, it's not less than that, but it's so much more. Because what we see here is that this woman, I can tell you, she probably didn't have like a PhD in theology. She probably didn't like know, like, like she, she probably wasn't like that schooled or, no, but all she had was a desperation that what she heard about Jesus, she needed to act on. There was this resolve in her. There's this, this fundamental idea in this posture in her heart that, no, I'm not just going to allow what I hear about Jesus to just stay here with me in my home. No, I'm going to, to step out in faith, and I'm going to act on what I hear because faith, just, just faith and trust in Jesus that does not respond in action is actually not even proper New Testament faith. The Bible says in James that even demons believe that God exists. So it's not just about what we believe. No, it's about what, how we respond and act on what we believe. Your faith has made you well, Jesus said. We got so many podcasts and, and so much content. But I'm telling you, Jesus calls you and I to step out in faith and not just to settle with mere information. No, but to live in the revelation of who he is. Step out on that. Why? Because the life of faith, according to Jesus, he says that if you have even faith the size of a mustard seed, that faith connected to who he is can move mountains and bring miracles. And I'm looking at my life and I'm looking at our life and we got all this information about God and God, why? Why am I not seeing more miracles? I don't need another word from God. You and I don't need another special revelation. All we need to do is continue to step out and act on what we know to be true about who God is. God says he is faithful. So I want my prayers and my life and my dreams and my imagination and my serving and my parenting and how I live. I want it to reflect who he is and I want to step out on that. I don't want to just be confined and look back on my life and say, man, I just kind of read books and I didn't do anything significant and I lived a life that was confined to my power and my intellect and my no I want to step out of a life and live a life that is supernatural and a life that brings miracles I don't want to just consume without actually stepping out and allowing God to bring about power and transformation in my life I know God is a healer so why don't we step out and believe I know God is faithful so why don't I trust God in my finances in Hebrews 11 says, in Hebrews 11, it says this. I want to read the scripture in Hebrews 11. Uh, it says this in verse 6. Uh, it says, and without faith, living within us, it would be impossible to please God, for we come to God in faith, knowing that he is real, and that he rewards the faith of those who give all their passion and strength into seeking him. I love that, because it reminds me of this woman. She gave all that she had. I love it, because... You know, she wasn't the only one in the crowd, by the way. <laughs> there were other people in the crowd and other people that touched her, but there's only one that received the miracle. There were other people that would have rubbed shoulders. And there are other people that were around Jesus. And, and man, I don't want to be someone that's just around Jesus. I don't want to be someone that uh, is around the power and the majesty and the beauty and the, 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 the essence of who God is, the power of God, and yet I, I am actually missing out on what he can offer me. Because here's the thing. Faith is a gift. It's a gift. He, he, Hebrews 
uh, 12 says this, that he's the author or the initiator of our faith. Hebrews 2, uh, Ephesians 2 says this, that by, uh, it was by grace that you were saved through faith, and this is a gift from God. So it's a gift. God offers it to us as a gift, but we exercise it through our obedience. So I need to exercise. If I want to grow in faith and grow in miracles and grow in seeing God move supernaturally, I need to be diligent with my faith. I need to step out in obedience. I need to, to not just be confined by just saying the right things. No, I need to step out in faith. There's so many people in the crowd, but there's one. Hey, I got a question. Are we just satisfied with being a part of the crowd? But no, will we reach out and touch the hem of his garment with intention? For some of us, that just looks like setting intention and, and, and waking up in the morning and saying, pray God, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to reach out to you today. I'm going to touch you. I'm going to create space in my life to pray. I'm going to read my word. I'm going to show up to dinner party. I'm going to give. I'm going to serve. I'm going to do something outside of my comfort zone, something that, that, uh, uh, will, that, only, if, that only will uh, be uh, uh, powerful if you show up in my life. What is it right now maybe that God is calling you to do, to step out and step out of the boat similar to Peter so that you can see God's power in your life in Jesus' name? In verse 28, it says this. For she thought to herself, she thought to herself, she's going through the crowd, and she's thinking to herself. I love that. How's your self-talk? Maybe when you, you heard maybe a promise from God, and you are contending and believing for a breakthrough. In the, in the gap between what God has promised to what you want to receive from that promise how are you talking to yourself? She kept saying to herself, I love this. If I can just touch his robe, I will be healed. If I can just touch his robe, if I, if I can just touch his robe, I can be healed. And immediately the bleeding stopped and she could feel in her body that she had been healed of her terrible condition. And Jesus realized at once that healing power had gone out from him. So he asked, so he turned around. I love that. And ask the crowd, who touched my robe? The third point is this. Not only does faith resolve to obey, but, but, but faith depends on God's power and not my own. It's God's power that brings the increase. It's God's power. I think part of why we don't pray and part of why we don't step out, and part of why we don't go all in, and part of why we don't give God our all is because we think that the miracle and the breakthrough is contingent upon our power. It's not our power. It's God. Jesus said, I felt healing. I felt, I felt power leave from me. It's God's power. It's not our own. So why are we afraid to pray? and believe for miracles. So often I, in my life, I, I for, refrain from having a big vision for our church or I, I, I refrain from, from having a big vision for my life. I refrain from seeing breakthrough and healing and miracles in my own life because I think that, man, if God doesn't come through, somehow, like, it's going to be bad PR for him or something. <laughs> As if like my power has anything to do with who he is. No, no, it's his power. So whatever outcome that you're believing for right now, just trust God with it because <laughs> it's not your power in the first place. There's some people right now, day after day, night after night, you're, you're believing or breakthrough maybe in finances. Hey, can I, what are you hearing about Jesus? Can I tell you what, what, for, for those people? The Bible says uh, that he will supply all of our needs according to his riches that are in Christ Jesus. Allow that to consume your imagination. There, there's some people here who in your heart and in your mind, you, you cannot you, you, you haven't saw healing yet. You, there's nightmares, there's fear, there's anxiety. There's, can I tell you something? 
Bible says that he keeps those in perfect peace who keep their thoughts fixed on him. There's people right now and you got broken heart. The Bible says that he is near to the broken hearted. I want you to fill your heart, fill your mind with, with who he is and what he says and what he does. He, he's a miracle worker. With him, all things are possible. Where have you stopped believing? Where have you stopped praying prayers that elevate the greatness of who he is? Because maybe you haven't seen it just because we don't see it. Because here's the thing. It's, it's not about what I can or can't do. It's about what, who he is and what he can do. That's what the, it's, it's not about. It's about who he is. And, and we need to put ourselves in position where we have to rely on the power of God. That's why I love Pastor Josh and Georgie. That's why I love why we have such a big vision. Because we believe, man, that we want to step out of the boat. We want to believe for the entire city. What if we just believe that, man, your entire, your entire job could be saved? <laughs> what if you believe that actually you could be healed of that disease? What if you believe that, man, that scoliosis in your back, that, no, God actually is the, the one that brings the kingdom, that comes to rule and to reign. What if we believe that, man, you don't actually have to go through the addiction. I know your dad went through it. I know your mom went through it. I know, I know your auntie had that thing. But can I tell you something? No, that if you are in Christ, that you are born again, that you don't, you don't have to be the product of a generational cursing. No, you are the product of a generational blessing because you actually received the spirit and the life of Christ. And I came in to tell us today that uh, the faith and the results that we want to see, it depends on God's power and not our own. And I want to inspire you and tr to, to trust God and let God be God. God is good at being God all by himself. The Bible says that there's nothing that's too hard for him. That he is the beginning and the end. That he is the great I am. He is the one who was, he is the one who is, and he is the one who is to come. He is the one who brings the kingdom. That his kingdom would come on earth as it is in heaven. And I'm telling you today, I want us to... Step out in faith again. Hey, dinner party leader, I want you to step out in faith again and believe for a miracle, for people maybe you've been believing for to, to come back. Or uh, I, want to, I want you to keep believing for them. Keep believing for God to, to move in their heart. There's parents in here. You've been believing for your kids to, to come back to the Lord. Keep believing. Keep praying. The results in, are connected to God's power, not my own. You know what's so fascinating? in the story though is that <laughs> Jesus although the woman like by law was she made other people unclean because of her condition in touching them as she touched Jesus there was actually a reversal <laughs> that she became clean because he is the great Lamb of God that, that washes away the sins of the world. And I gotta send that to some people watching this, and you just feel maybe a bit too dirty to approach God. You feel like too unclean or too impure or too. Can I tell you that you cannot make God dirty? You cannot make him impure. You cannot make him unholy or unrighteous. He can only make you holy. He can only make you righteous. He can only make you clean. This is the essence and the beauty of who our God is. That, 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 that I do not affect him. He affects me. And if you're here today and you're watching this and maybe you've come to the end of your rope, one, I got good news for you. Faith starts there. Good news. You're hopeless. You're powerless. You're helpless. Good news. Faith starts there. But are you, are, are, will you stop trusting in the things of this world? Will you stop trusting in man-made solutions? Will you stop trusting in, in if, okay, I'm going to figure out this and that and this. No, no, or will you just come to Jesus? And receive him afresh. He says, daughter, 
So not only did she get, get a miracle, I love it because when you come to Jesus, not only do you receive a miracle of salvation and healing, that word well there is the same word that we use for salvation and healing. Because Jesus comes into our life, not just to give us physical healing, no, but to heal us holistically, mind, body, soul, spirit. Not only do you get a restoration of who you are physically, but also you get a restoration of your identity, daughter. And I believe there's some people here that is watching this under the sound of my voice that you need to reach out and touch your creator, your lover. And when you touch him in faith, in your heart, in your mind, what happens is you don't make him dirty. <laughs> you don't, you, you, you don't, like your, your doubt does not come upon him. Your, your fear does not come upon him. Your, your faithlessness does not come upon him. Your insecurity, no, no, he only makes you secure. He only gives you hope. He only gives you he only makes us clean. So just receive it. Just step out in faith. And, and I, I, right now, I want to pray for some people who maybe you've distanced yourself from Christ. Maybe your faith has never even been existed. Can I tell you that just like this woman who doctor after doctor, no, Jesus is the only one that can heal the broken heart. Sin is a virus that enslaves us to the powers of evil to the powers of our flesh and Jesus is the only one that can heal that so if that is you and you say I've given up I, I, I want to give up on the things of the world I want to give up on man-made solutions I want to give up on trying to save myself I want to give up on oh, I, 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 I figured out I can relate to her I thought that my job was going to save me I thought that my career was going to save me I, I thought that this breakthrough was going to happen and, 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 and I was putting my hope and my salvation in that no I want to come to Jesus because Jesus is ultimately the only true salvation and if that's you all I want you to do is just respond in your heart right now and say hey that's me if there's a button in the chat that you can click or there's a you can just text the number on the screen just say yes to the text yes to the number on the screen right now just come back so right now just create some moment space in your heart in your mind I just want to pray for you to receive this afresh Jesus comes to bring life and healing it's not necessarily about the size of her faith no it was what her faith was connected in. maybe some of you right now you feel like your faith is feeble and small that's okay she said all you need is the size of a mustard seed it's not the amount but it's the object that your faith is connected to that actually brings so just reach out say god help god heal god restore god make me right god make me clean god heal my heart heal my mind just reach out. That's you. I believe there's a few more people watching this that you haven't made that decision yet. Come on, just click that button or respond in your heart or wherever you're watching. I'm just going to pray for you right now. Lord, I just, we just love you. We thank you for who you are. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your truth. Lord, we thank you that our faith comes by hearing. Lord, I thank you for every single person that heard this word about you, your character, your love, your nature, the essence of who you are. Now they want to put their faith in you. Thank you that you are a forgiver of all sin. You cancel all debt, that all of humanity has racked up this massive debt against you, but on the cross, you've forgiven it all, and that is the good news. Lord, thank you that in this moment, that now people that right now are making this decision to receive their identity just like she did as a daughter, as a son or a daughter, Lord, I pray that now we received it, that we would resolve to obey you and commit our lives to following you. We would be diligent, that we would not be half-hearted. No, we would give you all of our life. Why? Because you are worthy. You're not just our Savior. You're not just our friend, but you are our Lord. And I thank you that as we continue to live out a life of faith, that you would trust you with the outcomes. That we understand that our faith depends on your power and not our own. So Holy Spirit, have your way right now in this place. Open up hearts. Open up hearts. Open up hearts. Any hard hearts right now in this moment, open them up. So Lord, I thank you for every single person that's came back home and every single person that's made this decision afresh for the first time. But I thank you right now that you've sought them, that you've saved them. Lord, by the power of your Holy Spirit, I pray you would seal this moment in Jesus' name. And everyone said amen 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 hey come on can we just thank jesus for his word and for his truth so good but hey right now as a response we're going to sing that song i'm available right where you are just come on open up your heart 
Open up your mind. Come on, make that a de- declaration. Come on, God does something when we say, you know what, I'm available. Come on, you hear his call. Lord, I just thank you right now for who you are. God, I thank you for what you're doing in people's hearts, what you're doing in people's minds, what you're doing in their, what you're doing in their stories. God, I thank you that you're lifting our eyes, you're lifting our faith, you're lifting our expectation. Holy Spirit, have your way in this place. So Lord, right now, as we sing, I just pray, God, that you would do something miraculous. Come on, let's sing. Come on. Amen, amen. Come on. Come on, from the front to the back. Wherever you're watching, come on. Thank you, Lord. Holy Spirit, have your way. Come on. Come on, come on. Come on, let's declare it out. Come on. Come on, let's do it. Come on, church. Come on. Make this your declaration. Come on. Jesus, you can have it all. You can have all of us. Come on, let's keep singing. Come on. Come on, here we are. Come on. Here I our prayer. If you're here and you responded to that message, to that prayer that Pastor Fillmore just shared, to put your trust in Jesus. I love that. Shout out in the chat if you're thankful for that message, if you feel full of faith, if you feel encouraged today. I love that. That faith is a personal decision to trust God, but with that overflows obedience. Amazing. And if you're here and you made that decision today, don't log off this service without texting that number on the screen, without clicking in the chat to talk to one of our team. We have free resources we love to gift you to go on this journey of faith, just like the woman. It's a journey. God frees you. And then God wants you to connect with other people to live it out. So don't leave here without doing that. But right now, we're actually going to hear a story of one of the amazing people in our church and her own story of what it looks like to invite in, to put her trust in Jesus, and then see what he does with her faith in her life. So let's check out Tara's story. Growing up, my family was Christian Catholic. We used to go to church every weekend. We were really strong in our community um, for my whole life. And then when I was about 16, um, a lot of things happened. My dad left our family. Um, In that same year, he was diagnosed with Alzheimer's. My parents got a divorce. And a little while later, he got remarried. And so a lot of that um, caused us to step away from our church and our community. I was really closed off after my dad kind of stepped away. He was still there, but it wasn't the same. When one of your parents does that, it really makes you question people's motives and really makes you question letting people in. And so for a lot of years, I was just like, I'll keep you at a distance. Arm's length is great. I don't need anything from you. I will give you some of me, not all of it. And that trust was really gone for a long time. About a year after I decided to stop going to church. Um, I met Hannah Ray, and we became friends and she every month would ask me to go to church with her through college and I said thank you so much that sounds great Um, but I think I'm good. Nothing really changed until I came to New York and I was basically by myself and I was just striving and trying to make it in my career and putting all of my pressure on my worth in whether or not I succeeded in that, which was devastating. And then one day Hannah Rae said, look, I've tried at a lot of churches. I found C3. 
I think you should come. Give it, give it another shot, I think you should come. And I did. That day, I just remember walking in and everybody had their hands up and everybody was hugging and everybody was singing and never in my life had I experienced that inside a church. And so the first day I kind of looked around and I was like, that's great for you guys. Um, I'm gonna sit here, I'm gonna have my time with God, maybe I'll be back, maybe I won't. And then by the end, I was raising my hands and singing and saying, can I go to a dinner party? What are we, what are we doing? How does that work? Um, and I've been here ever since. I kind of just started to give God these little yeses. Yes, I'll go to church. Yes, I'll hang out with these people who I met while I was there. Yes, I'll, I'll give. Yes, I will start serving. And little by little, he was giving me more responsibility with that and just showing me that if I can give him just a little inch of yes, he can completely change the course of what my life was going to look like. And then one day I was just on the subway and I got this little tap on my shoulder, metaphorically, that was just, hey, reach out to your dad, reach out to his wife, I just sent one message, simple. I was like, okay, God, I'll trust you. And then through that, it opened back up the lines of communication and we started talking. And through that tiny yes, the connection was kind of sparked again, which I'm so grateful for now because I didn't know that time was limited at the time that it happened. Um, so I got about a year with my dad that was so special. And if I hadn't have just said yes to that little nudge from God, I would have missed out on that completely. And I would have lived with so much regret. And God was just able to take that away and have me not experience that pain, which I'm grateful for every day. Through those yeses, I got opportunities through career that I've been so happy with. I found my community, which they're not just my friends, they're my family. It's, it's my New York City family. I have my church that I love to serve at. That little yes that I took in one day has evolved into four years of little yeses, which evolved into just my entire life being reconstructed around loving people well and just spreading God's message and helping lift people up when they're down because I was there and I know how it feels. It's just completely transformed my life. Wow, Tara, that's beautiful. Thank you for sharing your story. Church, we love you. And we wanna make sure you know about a few things coming up. Next week, we are launching Growth Track. Pastors Josh and Georgie are so excited. This is a four-step process that is gonna help you come alive in who you are in Christ. You'll learn a little bit more about who we are as a church, the story of C3NYC, and how you can be a part of it and come alive in your purpose. So RSVP to the link below to save your spot for next Sunday. It's gonna be an amazing way to find out more about C3. We are back in dinner parties Wednesday night. If you are not a part of a dinner party, now is your time to sign up. We are online and in parks. So Wednesday night, you're not going to want to miss it. And church, next week, we are launching our new series called Perfect Weakness. We are diving into 2 Corinthians, and Pastor Josh and Georgie are just so excited for us as a church to launch a 21-day fast starting next week. So invite family and friends. It's going to be an amazing Sunday. We love you, church. We'll see you next week.
started this church, C3 NYC, in 2013, even though we had small beginnings, we knew that God had big plans. That's the power of the call of God. He causes us to step out in faith, cast a vision bigger than ourselves, and invite others to join in. We believe the church changed the moment you walked in. And that's because there's something so unique and special about the purpose God has for your life. So when we come together as this beautiful gathering of God's people, all of our purposes coming together in unity, well, that's what the church is all about. So Growth Track is a four-step process where we'll lead you through our vision statement, which is our vision is Jesus Christ, our reality is freedom, our mission is people, our cause is love. We're gonna answer your questions like, what is a dinner party? How can I get involved? Where are we headed as a church? Why would I be a part of a local church? We'll not only cover those questions, but also Growth Track will help unlock your purpose and bring you on the journey of how C3 NYC can become home for you. And as we learn to live that out together, then we'll be a people who bring transformation through the love of God to NYC and beyond. Why don't you join us as we go deeper and build together as a church. What's up? You ready? I'm ready. You ready? For sure. Wait, what's up? Ready for what? DP. DP? Dinner party. Oh, for C3. Wednesday. Wednesday. You know what that means. Wednesday. Wednesday. Time for DP. It's Wednesday. Wait, what am I going to make? Tacos? Pasta? Wings? Acai? Chili? Pizza? Maybe some greens? At a park, on Zoom, on a blanket, in my room. All right, everyone, on the count of three, call out the name of your DP. Dinner party. Oh, what's up? Dinner party. happiness that the world cannot take you will be salt that the world cannot understand yet they will feel different when they're around you you will be light that illuminates the image and the power of God